In this video, we will learn about the application of exact differential equations on production function. So let's start with a, a situation in which we have a firm that uses L number of labor and K number of machines as two inputs of a production process. The marginal products of the two inputs are given below because labor is there so it's marginal product and capital it has its own marginal product they have been calculated so this is the given data what we are required to do is to find out the total production function of this firm assuming that we are on the same isoquant so we are going to consider a situation where we have isoquant and this requires that the output is the same or the delta q will be the same or in other words uh, it will be equal to zero or in other words dq will be equal to zero so we uh, use this uh, given information and for that we are mathematizing the situation that is the output is the same same means that it is a constant value and then we take its total differential and that will be equal to zero because of the presence of constant on the right hand side and we will expand the you know the left hand side by using the formula of the total differential on this side which will be equal to this now this is the change in output due to change in capital and this is the change in output due to change in labor which definitely is representing MPK and MPL the marginal product of capital and marginal product of labor respectively and we are given the values of MPK and MPL so we are going to substitute these values consequently we get this expression which is uh, very much similar to the standard form of an exact differential equation and the value of M is this and the value of N is this or MPK is equal to M and MPL is equal to n so this is another piece of information that we can gather from this situation instead of y we have k variable and instead of t which was there in the standard form now we have labor now m has a certain value which is mpk and n has a certain value which is mpl and dy is equal to dk and dt is equal to dl so this is the extracted information which we can substitute in the exactness test in order to find out if we have an exact differential equation or not so the value of m is substituted and the value of n is substituted a small correction is that it should be l here and it should be k here so after correcting this we go ahead and um, after ahead of it is the calculation of the partial derivatives definitely in this case capital will be kept as constant and here labor will be kept as constant because here it's with respect to labor and here it's with respect to capital so this is the partial differentiation that we have done before in our previous courses here you can see capital has come out as a constant and here labor has come out as a constant remaining is the in uh, differentiation of this function with respect to labor and of this function with respect to capital so you can pause the video here and see these steps in order to find out what is the process of finding this thing which is the uh, final result broadly speaking we are going to gather the capital and labor in one place because they are the two variables and we will simplify all other uh, coefficients uh, wherever they are cancelable or uh, they are able to get simplified so after all of this uh, simple algebra we get this equality which is actually the uh, exactness test and that is confirmed they are equal so we have an exact differential equation that brings the news that we can do the four step procedure to solve it and the first step as we know is to write a preliminary function in which we talk about the dependent variable and the independent variables in a way that all of them come on the left hand side so we have the function it's 
left hand side is written in the first step we will differentiate it with respect to k so that it becomes m in the video where we have explained the solution of exact differential equation you can refer to that because it is going to help you because in that we basically learnt how to do this process here we are doing the same process but in this case capital and labor and output are being used as the variables so differentiation with respect to capital is here and I can also integrate it as per the requirement of the step 1 when I do this constant of uh, integration will be generated as well as any additive terms of nature L can be produced that were deleted or reduced to zero due to the derivative that we took so it is that same procedure that we learnt in the numerical example of exact differential equation gathering the constant of integration and the terms containing L we get this psi L which is the function which contains both of them and here you can read these lines that we have written the same thing that how these uh, this uh, psi t has psi L has been generated and we know that the derivative this derivative that is the derivative of the production function with respect to capital should be equal to M so we have substituted M here and we also knew the value of m that we have substituted here finally and this will allow us to do a little bit of simplification and integration so here as we are integrating with respect to capital labor will be considered constant and that's why we have brought it outside the integral and the term containing capital is left we reciprocalize it in order to be able to apply the power rule of integration but before we do this we remember that we are going to merge the constant of integration that was produced here and in this step it will be there the constant of integration we have merged it into psi l so that the um, complexity is not there because that will be another additional term which will cause uh, complexity in our process of solution and we have done this in the first uh, numerical of the exact differential equation as well so the power rule is being applied here of integration further is the simplification which is something which is uh, you know easy for you DIY do it yourself and after simplification we will get this answer which is the uh, preliminary result we should note it here so psi l is something we need to figure out in the first step and you know that uh, in second step what we do is we try to use the other variable that is labor in this case and with respect to that we take the derivative due to which we will be able to use the value of n to remind yourself about it you should refer back to the uh, first numerical example of exact differential equation so we have taken the derivative with respect to the other variable initially here we used capital to integrate let me remind you here we used capital to integrate here we are using labor to differentiate just like we used uh, different variables in case of uh, um, the first example in which we used y and t here we are using capital and labor so the derivative with respect to labor is an easy thing to do here you can do it here are uh, the detailed steps this uh, function becomes a derivative function 
here this simple differentiation is done treating capital as constant and labor as variable as we do the partial differentiation so on the left hand side we got rid of these extra notations and it was delta q over delta l which is equal to n and n has a value which is this value so we are going to val write the value of n here whereas the right hand side remains as it is and uh, simplifying the left hand side and the remaining term of the right hand side we see that they are the same so they get cancelled out and psi bar l is equal to 0 so at the end of the second step we have found the value of psi bar l but we remember in the preliminary result it was psi l that we need to find out so in order to revert back to the primitive we will take the integral so that we get back to the primitive which is the original function and this is what we will do in step 3 you can stop the video and, and see by pausing the video you can read these lines and see that we have written the same thing now as we have found that the derivative is equal to 0 the primitive of it that is psi l must be equal to some kind of constant that is the reason that the derivative of it is equal to 0 so we can use this virtue and we can come up with the value of psi l which is our objective so we have done the same we have taken the integral with respect to labor of the derivative of the psi l function so they get cancelled out and we get the value of psi l so both from logic or from the steps procedure we can find out the value of psi l now we have this value which will be substituted in the primitive function in the preliminary function or result so we are writing here the preliminary function and substituting the value of psi l in it which is k so we have uh, considerably solved this uh, preliminary result however this is something we can substitute and uh, since we know that the equation is an exact differential equation which means that the total differential is equal to zero so if the total differential is equal to zero the actual function would actually be equal to some kind of constant which we have named CQ after output which was uh, represented by quantity so CQ is what we have used so the differential of the function is equal to zero which means the actual function was some sort of constant after naming it um, this function now is substituted here as a constant value and the remaining is the same we keep it as it is and now we can simplify because this is another constant so is this so we can combine them and we can get uh, one symbol for it whereas the remaining things will be left on the left hand side and we are using the notation c for both of them that is the difference of them and now we have an equation which is free of any other symbol and only labor and capital are there in it this is what we wanted this is the solution however there is something else that we can do here because when I transfer this c on the left hand side it will become this so this is the function that is output is a function of labor and capital however in the Cobb Douglas production function that we have been studying before uh, we have a standard form which is something like this so um, you can see that some coefficient can be there which can be one or any other value capital labor is there and they have their own powers here we can observe that a is equal to 6 and capital is there alpha is 1 over 3 and beta is 2 over 3 
However, this minus e is not in the standard form. So we have to get rid of it. How we can get rid of it? By making sense of it. That why it should not be there. As you can see that in this uh, uh, Cobb Douglas production function, the formula is simple that there is a product of labor and capital. If I assume that either of them is zero, for example, this one, if this is zero or that one is zero, you know the answer will be zero because they are being multiplied. So either if labor or capital or both are zero, the output will be equal to zero. If they are non-zero, both of them, then there will be some s output. So it means that um, if either of them is zero, output should be equal to zero and there should be nothing else on the other side. So let's see this uh, separately. Here we are assuming that capital is equal to zero. Here labor is being uh, is considered to be zero and capital and labor both of them are considered to be zero. And when I put the value as zero, the answer would also be zero. As we see, whenever we substituted zero, we got an answer of zero. So uh, output is zero. However, on the right hand side, we still have minus c. And if this is zero, if this left hand side is zero, the right hand side should also be zero. So we cannot say that c is not equal to zero. We have to admit that c is equal to zero. Otherwise, the equality cannot be established. So if I write this, it means that it is a paradox. As I have mentioned it here. It is a paradox. It cannot be true. Therefore, we have to assume that c is equal to zero. Then the equality will be established. This also shows that there is complementarity. between labor and capital because if one either of them is missing the output will not be there so both of them should be present in order to give us some output so an economic interpretation of this ca uh, set of calculations is also available in the form of complementarity they complement each other now when we are forced to say that c should be equal to zero in order to maintain this equality this will be the final form so this is the uh, solution of the uh, production function using the exact differential equation and this was the equation that was built on mpk and mpl and finally we developed and a Cobb Douglas production function. So, by using the exact differential equations, we were just given the data of MPK and MPL, and we were able to build a Cobb Douglas production function. This is how we can use the exact differential equations to understand an economic situation of a production function and come up with its specific form. Thank you.